you know, I, I watched the talk that you gave about how you came up with the idea and put it together. That you were asked to do a show, you were given the space, and in a way you didn't know what to do. And so you came here. Mm -hmm. That was your first great idea, mm -hmm. was to start from what was here. Mm -hmm. And I think you came two or three times. You had the idea that you wanted to make a cathedral. Uh, finally, you settled on where you, where you are, what mm -hmm. you built. To me, it's, uh, it's as much a piece of architecture as anything. Mm -hmm. What's interesting to me about it is that it's a piece of architecture that is very recognizable. Mm -hmm. We can look at it and we can say there's a house-like quality to it, there's a domesticity to it, just as there is when we look at one of your jars. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's made of a material that houses aren't made of. It's made mm -hmm. out of rusty metal. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, and I love that part of it, mm -hmm. that you didn't try to make a log cabin. And what I also like about it is because it's made of rusty metal, we can actually see where all the pieces fit together. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that I love about the work you do in clay is that I can see your fingerprints on it mm -hmm. and I see how it came together. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know how because you're so skilled at what you do, but I can sense it coming together. Yes. And that's what I see in this. I think, isn't it remarkable that Daniel has somehow transferred the way he works as a potter and thinks about things and their qualities into this house that's made out of rusty metal and it's actually even got a fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I love that. Now, here's oh, another reason I love that, is that all of us as architects do buildings that no one has seen before. I mean, we're asked to do, you know, a building like this one, which is an art gallery connected to a former chancellor's residence. What's that supposed to look like? Right. Well, it's always going to be different, or it's most often it's different. Mm -hmm. But we want those buildings to have a familiar quality to them. We want them to be somehow relatable that we feel comfortable there yes that's another thing that yours has you see it has mm -hmm. that it's abstract but it's also familiar mm -hmm. and I, th th those are just such remarkable qualities and you know th this is a better piece of architecture than anything i've done <laughs> you know well, thank you i've right. tried to do things like the pottery center i wanted a building that was modest but dignified and that somehow showed the way it was made just like all the pots and jars and plates inside showed how they were made mm -hmm. and inevitably you know other things take over like it has to have electric lights and exit signs and <laughs> right, 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 right. yours has this pure quality to it that yes, the luxury of the... To, to me, it's just so beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's a huge compliment, and I... I, I struggled for quite a while with the installation. Um, I think this past year has been a really tough year for, for most people, and for myself, it's been, um, pr yeah, the hardest year of my life, for sure. And um, and so I built this underneath the circumstances, and I th I think the structure represents you know house and home, mm -hmm. and um, what that means to me, and and our house is is, is I realize is ultimately my cathedral. Mm -hmm. It is I ended up building my cathedral, what I worship, and that's family and house and home and I wanted to take people 
into that place. And that place is the present, is where I always try to trap people. Mm -hmm. um, and I had the most encouraging email from these two critics um, because I know there's a current situation in their home, and one of them is um, his wife has Alzheimer's, and so it's it's a great deal of work at home for him. And when he came and he saw it, then he wrote to me. He said it felt like a cage. And I thought it was transparent that it let you see through structure mm -hmm. and let you feel what was important there. Mm -hmm. I was kind of devastated by this. But then I thought how much more fucking successful could have I been mm -hmm. to make him feel, for him to understand his, his home at the moment as, as it is. He drove 30 miles and came into my installation and he recognized home. And for him right now, home is a cage. It's a cage. It is for his wife too. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's fitting for the year, I suppose. It's devastating. But it's also His nine-year-old niece ran through it back and forth, back and forth, happy, as if she was at home. And yeah, and you realize you, you build these things, you know, and when they obtain this power, then you, you don't have any control over them after that mm -hmm. because if you evoke this in someone, then you are evoking this in someone and you have to let that be where it's at. And I've, I've taken my biggest pleasures in my installations have been in, in children and I have felt successful. If I can see that they go through the installations in the exact same way that I ran through the hay barns on my farm as a child. If I can see that they are as free and feel as protected and their understanding is unquestioned, then Everybody else that has a problem with it is from having grown up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I went, to, I went to visit a friend in Alabama a couple of years ago, and she lives in the, she's, she's a, a great grandmother now, and she lives in the house that she and her husband built mm -hmm. back in the 1940s. Wow. And she raised children, and she's had grandchildren, now great-grandchildren. It's a big old rambling house. It's painted blue. Mm. And she says she remembers her children used to run around the house and go up the stairs and across the attic and slide down the banisters and so on. Mm. And she remembers her grandchildren doing exactly the same thing mm. and her great-grandchildren. Mm -hmm which tells me that there's something instinctive about the way children can relate mm -hmm. to a particular place. Yes. And that's what I'm hearing about your installations and children who visit there. And of course, your own childhood. Take that a, even a little slightly step further. I think um, that 
The other part of the installation is there's actually pots in these installations. So we have, not only do we have the structure itself, which uh, uh, this, this installation is much more architectural than any of the other installations that I've done, but um, you see, that's whenever I believe people can actually see. So my thought is, my process is, if you can take someone to that point in their life, if you can create an object that they can walk through that transforms them back into that state of mind, then they can see an object in a way an object sort of deserves to be seen. Mm -hmm. I'm a potter. <laughs> In a way, I hate the word potter. I hate, I hate the idea of a potter. Uh, I think I kind of want to, you know, I sort of think of myself as an artist, but I also hate the word artist. Sure. <laughs> I think the pure versions, for a potter, the pure version is a farmer. And for an artist, the pure version is an architect in many ways. And I'd, pottery and farming are so closely related. And I, I mean it in the most honorable way. I, I guess I just want I don't want it to be clever. I don't want it to be timely. I want it to resonate. You want it to have integrity. Yeah, I want it to have integrity. And um, I think in many ways, uh, architecture has been the back the integratorial backbone of art. <laughs> Weren't the early potters around Seagrove all farmers? Yeah, exactly. You know, and they made pots to tide over the seasons. Yeah, and it was a seasonal thing. You farmed, you farmed in the rainy season. I mean, you farmed in the dry season, and you 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 potted in the cold, wet season. Absolutely, mm -hmm. it's the same way in Thailand. Everywhere I've been trained mm -hmm. has been. Uh, been that, that, that way, that ideology, you know. Um, and there, there's an integrity of the person that exists in that existence, if, if that makes sense. And uh, it's a difficult leap because I am, I am a person who is not afraid to say that I do believe there is a separation between craft and art. I, I very strongly believe that there is a separation between craft and art. Uh, and, and by definition, it is only the idea that craftsmen believe they are less that makes that inferior. It is not an inferior position to be a craftsman. Um, and there are a lot of artists and art critics who help them reinforce that unfortunate view. I, I also, I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, absolutely. It is maybe this self-battling thing that I like take on the responsibility to make sure that craft is represented fully as itself and that art can be born from that mm -hmm. and that both are both are absolutely mandatory if anything's going to be timeless mm -hmm. that there is a separation but if it's to live, they are birthed together. Mm -hmm. When I was a student uh, of architecture, 
I had this fantastic history professor, and he used to say, a little bit like you were saying about art and craft, that there's two types of structures. One's a building and one is architecture. He said, a bicycle shed is a building. Lincoln Cathedral is architecture. Mm. And I said, okay, and, you know, I'd been to Lincoln Cathedral, it was pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. But when I came back to America and started, you know, looking around, because I, I learned from what I can see, and I sense that you do too, mm -hmm. I started to notice things like barns and other types of shed buildings that you see when you drive around North Carolina. And that's when I began to realize that those sheds had a dignity to them and an integrity to them mm -hmm. that I could compare to a cathedral. Mm -hmm. And so when I, when I look at what you've built here, mm -hmm. uh, it may appear modest, and I like that quality to it, mm -hmm. but it also has a, uh, a great dignity. Uh, I, I would almost say that it has a soul. Thank you. And because of what you've put into it, that makes it a cathedral. So I like the idea that a shed can be a cathedral. <laughs> <laughs> and I also like the idea that every cathedral is also in some way a shed. Yes. Yeah. It's there to provide shelter. Yes. Yeah, yeah I think it's a really important, the most simplest things can be so complexing and the most complexing things. So well, if, most if I look at your jars, mm -hmm. you know, they're jars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're a volume, they can hold things, mm -hmm. they've got a top. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I look at some of the things you've done back there and they, they look like one of them ought to be a funeral monument for Genghis Khan. Hmm. It's so powerful. Yeah. And it, and it has such presence to it, right? At the same time, it's a jar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think you really... Um I think if you want, I think the installation sometimes uh, maybe more Freudian. Um, sometimes I build the installations to hide the jars a little bit. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about that. There, I think the jars are. in many ways all that I am. Mm -hmm. The most pure sense of myself. Mm -hmm. I think it's hard to put them on display. Are they like your unconscious? They are me. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes maybe uh, maybe I want to control how people see them, <laughs> you know. I can, it's not pure form. Myself, I, I just want to say I think it's one of the most remarkable things about your installation that you have displayed them that way. Yeah, and you. what you told me, just told me, explains that. You know, I've, I've seen installations by Mark Hewitt, mm -hmm. and he does monumental mm -hmm. jokes too. Yeah. And they're lit up like movie stars. Mm -hmm. And what a contrast. Yeah, 
Thank you. I, I really admire what, what you just said. Yeah. yeah. I think that's all I've got. I don't think I can go any deeper. <laughs> it's pretty, it's like, uh, it's probably more truth than I want to reveal to the world. Huh?